Hello everyone, hope you all are doing great. Welcome to our YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss the post installation performance metrics of MacOS Secure Developer Beta 1 on our machine Dell Optiplex 3060 Tiny. Before we begin, let us jump to the system specification of the machine I am currently running this Mac OS on. So let's go to about this Mac and here is about my device. The processor which we are using is Intel Core i3 8100T 8th generation based on Skylake architecture and that comes with 4 core and quad threads. The graphic acceleration is based on Intel USD Graphics 630 with a memory of 200, 2048 MB. The memory configuration we are running this machine on is a 20GB dual channel 2400 MHz DDR4 RAM with 16 plus 4 configuration. Then let's jump into more information. As you can see, the macOS is macOS 15.0 beta. So this is the latest developer beta one. The display which we are using is Bang GW2790, and this is a 27 inch with a canvas display base resolution of 1080p and 100 hertz refresh rate. So let's jump to the system report. So starting with the audio first. All the audio channels are working well. The on-device Bluetooth uh, built-in line input and the built-in output, along with the HDMI cable, which uh, which provides the output through HDMI or the display, is working well. Bluetooth device. The Bluetooth is not working because we are using in uh, because we are using the TP-Link UB500 Bluetooth dongle, and that is based on a Realtek architecture, and which is not be supported ever by Mac OS. There are no camera currently connected to this system, but we can use the camera by connecting our iPhone with USB cable to this machine so that continuity features will work. No card reader configuration is there on the system, so it's not gonna work. Jumping directly towards the graphic of the display, so as I stated before, Intel USB 630 is the graphic chip that we are currently running this Mac OS on. This slot is Intel at 0 0.20, so this is an open core graphic frame buffer patch. So, other information is as this 1920s to 1080p resolution at 100 Hz refresh rate. And memory configuration, as stated before, is based on 16 plus 4 GB configuration, 2400 MHz GDDR4, making total of 20 GB RAM. So, there are two storage devices on this device as a whole so the first one is a consistent nvme 6256 gb so this is that storage on which our mac os is currently installed on and the sequential read and write speed on this nvme is significantly higher than tra uh, traditional sata ssds and that is obvious because of the nvme technology so sequential read speed is somewhere around 1700 mbps and the write speed is somewhere around 1300 megabyte per second Next, this is the PCI. The only PCI configured on this is USB 630. Then moving forward, the second storage device is the SATA SSD that is 256 GB of storage of based on Intel 11 series chipset. So this is that storage device on which our Windows is currently installed so that we can dual boot whatever the operating system we want to boot in. Then these are the system partitions. So nothing great in this. Yeah, just just there is this drive that is interesting. So what I have done is that I have created a partition out of the SATA SSD in the partition scheme of XFET. So XFET is that system partition that is supported both by the Mac OS and the Windows so that we can have a bridge between the two operating system. Example, if I want to download anything and save it in my normal partition of the Mac OS that is by default in APFS which is not supported by Windows or vice versa if I download anything in my Windows machine that will be saved on drive that is based on NTFS partition scheme which is not supported by Mac OS. So I created a partition as I stated based on XFIT so that I can save command files into this drive, this partition and which can be accessible both by Mac OS and the Windows. There are no Thunderbolt output or the Thunderbolt or uh, USB configuration on Dell Optiplex 360 so this is not gonna work and not gonna test that. And all the USB port on this Dell Optiplex is USB 3.1 bus drivers. So there are currently four devices connected. 
this is the mouse usb mouse receiver and this one is based on uh, the wireless keyboard this one is the tp link wireless networking uh, usb adapter so this is wi-fi adapter so as you can see my wi-fi is currently connected so one more special thing about this adapter is that this adapter is not actively supported by mac os so we need to disable csr util so that we can have the support for third party drivers and only that way we can make this adapter work so this is the uv500 bluetooth adapter which is not going to work in mac os because it is based on our realtek architecture nothing major on this side so let us jump to the system activity so that we can have an vague idea about how the system is performing after this installation so jumping to the activity monitor starting with the cpu so the idle cpu uses for the system is generally marking up to 10 percent to 15 percent and with a user without doing anything great is somewhere around four to six percent so which is very good and it's not a secret that 8100T of i3 is not a good processor. It is just enough for some daily stuff. Then memory. Memory generally keeps itself to the mark of 7.6 GB out of 20 GB and sometime it jumps to 8 or 9 GB. Then still we are having a good amount of 10 GB for our normal or other tasks that we can perform. Then disk because it is NVMe so there is no problem with the disk uses or the lag due to the disk. And this is the network. So further let us test the internet speed on this in Wi-Fi dongle. Even though the USB adapter comes with the bandwidth of 300 Mbps supportability, uh, still we are getting internet speed way lower than that because it is based on third party architect, uh, third party drivers and that is making its performance a bit degraded. Then, uh, software, so I have currently installed the Microsoft Office 2021 and the final cut pro x so both are working fine all the essential features on the microsoft access that comes with office 365 or 2021 are working like x lookup the filter function the sequence function and all that other functions that are generally restricted to the 365 are also available in 2021 version so they are working well then we have it as is the final cut pro x so let's open that as I have imported a file earlier. So the Final Cut Pro X actually works okay okay so because of the processor limitations but it's usable at least on 1080p resolution files. Now coming to the main part of this video is the EFI. So it is based on OpenCon version 1.0.1 and here are the essential kicks that I have installed on this EFI is Apple ALC that is very much standardly low whatever green virtual sm so these are the essentials that you need to have apart from that nothing major is there except the access here and supported and usb inject all that that were used for my usb 3.1 configurations then i'll open the config.p list so there is only one catch with that so i had to struggle a bit with the frame buffer patches on my uh, 8100t processor to make the usb 630 work with other output like vga also so these are the frame buffer patches so you can refer to this in my efi drop in the description if efi is required one another problem that was commonly faced by many users was related to the wallpaper download so whatever uh, whenever we had to download a wallpaper it it earlier had a problem that it is downloaded but after getting downloaded it was again needed to re-download it and that never actually worked but that problem is not on this system anymore so as you can see i'm downloading a wallpaper and it probably gonna work fine meanwhile i connect my device 
through the USB so then we can have an idea about the continuity features that I was talking about. Yeah, the wallpaper downloads are working perfect. 